Whenever I go out to shoot landscape images, I generally bring the same gear with me each and every time. So today, I wanted to show you the two different loadouts I use when I go out to shoot landscape images. Hey guys, Craig McCormick here from DestructivePixels.com and as you may have just noticed, I actually said that I have two different loadouts for when I go out to shoot landscape images. And there is a good reason for that and it will be all made clear by the end of this video. But in short, it's generally to do with if I'm traveling internationally or not and the place I'm actually visiting. But without further ado, let's jump over to the overhead GoPro angle so I can show you all the gear that I bring with me and the bag that I put all that gear in. Okay, so this is the bag that I actually have all my gear in. This is the Peak Design Everyday Messenger Bag. I'm currently uh, testing it out and I'm quite liking it so far. I will be doing a review of the bag in the future. Um, at some point, there'll be a little annotation somewhere up here on screen and you'll be able to go to that video. But right now, at the time of the, this video being released, uh, I haven't finished reviewing it yet. So um, I actually really love the first thing is the way that the tripod comes in here. This is the tripod that I use most often. This is the really right stuff, uh, TQC uh, 14 travel tripod, nice, nice and small. And if I just open up the latch here, you can see this is all the gear that I bring with me. It's actually a fairly small amount of gear um, when I go out and shoot landscape images, but I'll tell you what, I'll pull all this gear out and then I'll just lay it out here on the table and then you can see basically what's what, what I bring with me. Okay, so this is all the gear that I bring with me. As you can see, it's not an awful lot when you really think about it. There's a little bit of extra gear here for the videos that I make, but for the most part, the shooting stuff is pretty standard. As I said before, I've got my TQC, um, TQC 14, uh, really right stuff, travel tripod, really nice and small. I love how light and compact this little tripod is. Extremely useful, can be used in all sorts of locations. This is my go-to tripod, apart from when I am traveling and I'm going to a location that's a bit more um, windy or if I think I'm gonna be shooting in coastlines and stuff like that, I have a bigger tripod that I'll show you later on. But as I said, I use this for 90% of what I actually shoot with. And of course, we've got the ball head that came along with it. This is the BH30 ball head from Really Right Stuff again. Just attach this onto the side. I just keep it off uh, the tripod for the bag because it means that the tripod length is a little bit smaller and shorter when I have the tripod actually inside the bag itself. So nice and simple. It's easy enough to take the ball head off. It's pretty simple. And by having it off, it means I can use it potentially with the Platypod Pro. Uh, I will be doing a separate video on this as well. This is basically, think of it like a flat um, tripod. Think of it like a flat tripod where you can put it on flat surfaces where either a tripod is not allowed or it, there's no space for a tripod itself. So it's really useful to have. And it also comes with these little um, screw feet there that you can actually attach in if you need to balance up on an uneven surface. Pretty useful thing and it's really, really small and compact. I just keep this in my bag constantly now. Uh, next bit obviously is the camera. I should probably have gone on to that first. Um, 5D Mark III and the Canon 16 to 35 f 2.8 um, version 2 lens. Uh, this has been my go-to workhorse lens for a long, long time. I've used this for years. Uh, if you actually look at it closely, I've got all sorts of little battle scars all along it, but it's my go-to lens for pretty much everything and I love it to bits. Um, as you'll remember, I'm a little bit of a Peak Design fanboy. You'll kind of learn that. And um, I have obviously the little um, 
I can't even remember the name for these now, the little anchor points where you can attach different accessories. I've got the little wrist strap on there. This is what I normally use. So I can just attach the camera to my wrist and I don't have to ever worry about dropping it in case I do, because I can be a little bit clumsy, but easy enough to do. This is what I bring with me. And if I can just get this off my hand nice and quick. And you'll see here, this is a little Swiss, uh, Arca Swiss plate that Peak Design make. And that's because it attaches, I'll show you very, I'll show you guys very quickly here on the bag. We've got the Peak Design Capture Pro Clip here. And this is what I use when I'm walking around and I want my camera easily accessible anywhere I go. I can just attach the camera there and it's just dangling on the side. But again, you'll see a little bit more of that in the bag review. Um, more tripod stuff. This is the Manfrotto Pixie tripod. I use this um, mainly for this camera. Now, this is the Canon Allegria Mini X. I use this to shoot vlogs um, where I go out and actually show you how I shoot the images that I shoot. You actually go out on location with me and you see everything. So I use, I'm starting to use this now as um, kind of like a stabilizer for me rather than holding out the, the camera just with my hand itself. I can actually use the tripod as a little stabilizer. And if I ever want to do any B-roll shots um, of me setting up shots and things like that, I can easily just set up the little tripod and with the little red button here on the actual tripod I can push that in and I can adjust the frame of the actual camera itself so very nice and easy to do I love using it for just that and with this Legri Mini I also use a lavalier microphone this is um, from Audio Technica it's just a little lav a uh, little battery powered um, lavalier mic that I use just to get better audio for the videos. Of course, cable releases, I have the, just the standard Canon cable release. This is what I use most of the time now. Um, it's a very simple little locking mechanism if I wanna do long exposures kind of thing. Pretty simple, kind of expensive, but it's worth it if you're ever looking at getting a pretty solid cable release. Another cable release I do have is the Trigger Trap. Uh, I love this. I've done a couple of different videos on them. I've mentioned them quite a few times. I love using Trigger Traps. If you want to learn more, just search Trigger Trap online on YouTube. You'll find tons of videos, including videos here on my channel. Uh, and it, basically what it does is it uses the phone to trigger your camera. And this is another accessory that comes along with it. It's where you can put this mount into your hot shoe of your camera and you can mount your phone inside of that. So then you can keep an eye on your phone in your hot shoe when you're doing things like time lapses. That's what I use this kit for most of the time. Uh, in fact, this is really this little kit here with the foam clamp, the trigger trap cable and the platy plate. Uh, this is my go-to little kit for shooting time lapses. As you can see, very, very nice, small and compact, very easily to travel around with. Of course, just some spare batteries. Uh, I've talked about batteries before. I'll actually, I'll put a little link here for a video I did on batteries. A little good tip is to do a little marker just to say when the battery is charged or not. Um, really nice little tip. Definitely keep spare batteries with you when you go out and shoot landscapes. There's nothing worse than traveling all the way to a location and not having enough power. Just some spare memory cards. Always keep these with me. These are just empty blanks. Um, I have a standard set of cards that I use for everything. These are older cards that I don't use anymore uh, and I keep them blank and empty for that very reason in case I just need extra space. I've done a lot of shooting and I need some extra space. These just stay in the bag, they're nice and empty. Uh, 16 and 32, you can do whatever you want but this is what I do. These are just old cards that I keep with me. Little lens cleaning cloth, I'm probably gonna replace this soon to be honest but it's definitely worth having something to clean your lens with. Uh, lens cap. Obviously, lens cap and camera clamp. That's just that there. This is a cool one. This is a Canon uh, GPS receiver. If I can get it out of here. This is the one thing I don't like about this is the bag. Uh, this goes into my hot shoe and when I'm taking pictures, it sends, it saves all the GPS uh, location information. So, um, you know, longitude, latitude, the, um, the, the height and all that kind of stuff, really useful to have if you're shooting in outdoor locations and you don't have a specific 
um, location name or anything like that this will give you the exact coordinates of where you shot each and every picture very useful to have extremely expensive it costs I, I think I paid something like 250 pounds for it um, it's ridiculous but you know <clears throat> you buy it once and it's good for a long long time uh, I used to use this quite a lot this is the really right stuff L bracket for my Canon camera as you can see it's just a little L bracket so I can shoot my images uh, landscape or portrait. Uh, I don't use it anymore, as I said, because I use the um, Arca Swiss plate from Peak Design. But if I ever need to do an L bracket, it's mainly, I keep this in my bag now, if I want to do portrait shots, you know, portrait shots uh, when I'm out shooting landscapes, I keep this with me just in case. Better than trying to flip the ball head around and have the camera awkwardly situated on the ball head. It's pretty light. I mean, it weighs nothing. It's just aluminium it's pretty easy to do but I keep that with me for that very reason in case I want to do little quick portrait images <clears throat> this is the peak design field pouch there's nothing in it right now actually but I will be kind of changing my loadout a little bit I am currently still testing this I got this along with the bag when I supported it on Kickstarter it's okay um, I don't know if I will be using it but it's definitely something I am experimenting with and last but not least the filters this is what i use the most for my landscape images we of course have the the filter the um the actual holder for the leaf filter kit and we've got the 82 millimeter wide angle adapter ring this is what i attach to my 16 to 35 lens on the front very easy to do just get this back in here and we have three different filters that i use I use these all the time. First, we have the 10 stop big stopper. This is the big 10 stop neutral density filter. This I used a lot. As you can actually see, the tin is incredibly bashed up, but if I open this up, the glass is totally perfectly fine. Um, these things are actually pretty tough. Just don't drop the actual glass bits themselves, but the metal casing that they come in is extremely solid and very, very useful. Again, we have the little stopper as well. This is a six stop neutral density filter. Uh, I actually have an entire video on uh, leaf filters, which I'll link up for you guys to check out if you want to, basically how you use the leaf filter system and things like that. I love these filters, I use them all the time. Uh, and this is a really nice one. This is a circular polarizer that they make. This is actually the older one. They currently have a new one that is designed specifically for landscape photography. It's a little bit thinner than this one and it's got a little bit of an orange tint to it rather than, a, um, rather than just the standard neutral density um, colors to them. As you can see, I don't know if we'll be able to actually show you here. We won't, but it's a circular polarizer. Obviously, um, very useful and actually attaches to this front ring. If you can just see that here, I've got a little ring around the front. And I'll try and show you just very quickly. There you go, that just attaches to the front. This attaches to the lens and then I have a polarizer. Very, very useful. So that's it. As you can see, it's not an awful lot of gear that I need. It's really, it all fits in that bag totally fine with space to uh, space to spare as you saw but um, as I mentioned I do two different loadouts and that depends on if I'm traveling or not and if I am traveling to a location that's quite far away or I know that it's a little bit mountainous or it's very windy I will bring <clears throat> if I can just move some of this gear out the way I bring this this is the TVC 33 tripod from Really Right Stuff. As you can see, it is a much bigger, much bulkier tripod with a very big ball head. This is the BH55 ball head. This is a monster ball head. This will deal with pretty much everything I throw at it and more. And uh, if I am traveling and I'm going to a location where I don't go too often and I want to make sure I have enough lens coverage, I have enough focal, lane, focal range coverage, I will generally always bring, <clears throat> I will generally always bring this 16 to 35 lens with me. And I'll also bring this. This is the Sigma 24 to 105 lens. I actually did an entire video on this. And this lens going all the way to 105 gives me a little bit more coverage. Uh, very useful to have when I'm traveling in case I want to go a little bit farther. I do have a 70 to 200, but if I'm just shooting landscapes, I generally don't bring it with me because it's quite big and heavy. Whereas this is really nice and small when you compare it to a 70 to 200, which is probably more about this size. It takes up a lot more space in my bag. 
But if I am traveling internationally, I generally don't use this. This is more of an on location when I'm shooting around town. I use a GORUCK, which is not a camera bag. This is just a standard, um, this is actually kind of more of a military spec backpack. I have a blog post, which I'll link to down in the description that you can go and check out. You can see how I use a loadout. Um, but to cut it short, <clears throat> I use these. These are think tank pouches. And this is what I use when I'm traveling internationally. I bring all my camera gear with me in my hand luggage. I put it in these little protectors just to help separate them and protect the gear a little bit if I'm traveling internationally. Going in my bag can be a little bit rough sometimes, especially with the amount I travel. All right, but that is it. Now you know everything that I bring with me when I go out to shoot landscapes. Uh, I'm really enjoying using this bag. I was using the Goruck originally uh, that you just saw, but I'm starting to use this a little bit more now because it's nice and small and compact. And as you saw, it can still fit a hell of a lot of gear inside it. So I can bring all this stuff and more. It's incredibly, incredibly versatile really liking this bag but yeah if you have any comments or questions please put them down below i'd love to uh, answer any questions that you have about landscape gear um, this loadout really hasn't changed that much for me in the last few years i've been shooting landscapes for a while now and it genuinely hasn't really changed i've just been adding little bits and changing little bits from here on out but anyway thanks very much for watching guys thanks for sticking to the end i've been kramer comic i'll catch you in the next one